my pleasure to speak to you on the subject of priestly medicine. Now, we ministers and priests, we have a supernatural power <laughs> to really <laughs> what, heal people by giving them so much peace in their hearts when we speak, and something like this happens. But I have to share with you first, before we talk about the subject, my mixed feelings when I was told that my talk should be less or within 15 minutes. Uh, I was happy and I was sad. I was happy because it goes very well with a saying of a man that I admire very much, Bishop Ambrose of Milan, who said that what we ought to do the most is to speak less and to stop and be silent if we are to find anything to say. But I was sad because I felt someone was cutting my pulpit opportunity for preaching short. And um, then I, you know, I, I've, come, I've come with, uh, with terms, I've come to terms with that as I realized this isn't preaching. And uh, the second thing is, when I came along the stats for the year 2012, for the average human attention span. The average human attention span for 2012 is eight seconds, <laughs> which is one second less than a goldfish. So I thought, let's get right into the topic, priestly medicine. Uh, it's a combination of two words. It's a term that for some people is an archaic phenomena, something very old. To other people, it's an oxymoron. And to others, it is lucid and meaningful. So what is this priestly medicine? So I, I, I read a little bit into uh, ancient literature, and I found that in the ancient Egyptian civilization, a man by the name of Imhotep, you have him on the screen there, is credited for being the first medical doctor ever spoken of. And he happens to be a priest. And he is the first one, Imhotep, to produce a treatise, a medical treatise, that put together information, diagnoses, cures, anatomical observations, and the like, without any magical thinking. The so-called Edwin Smith Papyrus is the treatise that this man put together, and he has uh, been referred to by William Osler as the father of medicine, as we know it. He happens to be a priest. So I thought maybe today I could be your Imhotep, and uh, especially, uh, you know, birth-wise, I'm born in Egypt. Education-wise, I have a medical, I am a healthcare medical professional, and, and my vocation is a priest. So let me get right into priest and medicine. When you think of medicine, what comes to your mind? Well, people usually would tend to think of the Western medicine. And think of a team of people together, a doctor, like a physician, a nurse, a physiotherapist, a pharmacist. Well, we don't see a priest up there in that team. And yet when you dig into civilization, you look into other cultures, anthropologists have found that shaman, priest, medicine man, have, these roles have actually been played by the one and the same individual. So when you think of this priestly role that we have, I looked up some modern books. I looked up some modern periodicals, and I came across the Yale Journal of Biology and Medicine, and the author, Daniel Hall, um, he authored a very interesting article, and he wrote that humans need help. Well, they need help to uh, weave the experience of illness into a tapestry of meaning, and uh, he said that this is fundamentally a priestly role, in that it puts the individual's experience of suffering and illness in the background of meaning and value. And he, 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 he highlighted the fact that this is a priestly role. The hospital, you don't see a priest residing over life and death. You see mainly a physician. A chaplain may be invited in to help, but still, it's the doctor that resides over life and death in our Western current world. Well, what we see up there is 
one of the sacraments of the church. A priest is ordained mainly to be responsible to administer the sacraments of the church. And the sacraments of the church, as Hall puts it, sacraments put physical form to the theology. They put physical form to the hope and the promise of the gospel through things like the elements of the Eucharist, the waters of baptism, and the oil of unction. It is the understanding of the church that we are not spirits floating around, that we're still in the physical body, and there are physical things such as a touch or an oil or a hand that can convey a touch of healing. So if I had to define what priestly medicine is, I could think of so many things. I, th I chose to speak of three things. First, priestly medicine is a constant reminder that God exists and that God cares and God hears and God listens. I tell you, when I walk in the mall, people do look at me. <laughs> and some people approach me and some people ask me and some people stop me. But I tell you all the time as I'm walking anywhere, it's a constant ambulatory reminder that God is not dead in the heart of people. That God exists, that God loves, that God loves you, cares for you, and hears you. On my way back from Montreal a few weeks back, I was on the train, what uh, I thought to be my off time. As I was going to the washroom, a lady stops me. She didn't know I was going to the washroom, but she stops me. <laughs> and she says to me, Father, bless me, for I have cancer. And I stood, took out my cross, prayed for her and with her. Even though people come with terms, come, come to terms with their physical illness, something about a prayer said, something about a nice, caring touch, and a prayer that is offered that goes a very long way. The word priest in the biblical Greek word is presbyteros. And the word actually means intercessor. That is what a priest does first and foremost, is pray. Priests are people of prayer. The reminder that there is a channel that still connects us in this world with another world. That connects us here with a God who hears, listens, and cares. And that goes a long way with people. Secondly, priestly medicine is about a remedy for broken relationships. Now, the universal disease of humanity is not cancer. Not everyone gets cancer. Not everyone gets a heart disease. Not everyone gets a, a certain particular communicable disease. But I tell you, every person, every human is sickened with a broken relationship. Every person has an unmet desire for someone to connect with them significantly. We get this as we're very little. When we cry, we're there calling for attachment. We want to be held. And then, as life goes on, even at that moment, when, when people are still little, they may get an injury of that attachment. You may be familiar with author Sue Johnson, Susan Johnson, who is uh, one of the founders and, and the main pro proponent of emotionally focused therapy. She says and highlights that seeking and, and nourishing contact with significant others is an innate primary, it's an innate primary principle for all of us throughout the, our lifespan. We all need to be held, to be connected, to be loved, to be secure with other human beings. Aladdin. Aladdin, the character Aladdin, all what he was supposed to do was rub the lamp, get a distant alien genie who's a wish fulfillment service provider. <laughs> but what does he get? He gets a genie with whom he forms a real friendship. Well, you know what? The real lifetime genie of the lamp is a priest. When in trouble, you rub the you call the priest. Sorry, <laughs> the priest comes. When you're sick, 
traditionally, people would call the priest. When you have a new infant, a newborn, you call a priest. When someone dies, you call a priest. When you're in love and you want to get engaged and get married, you call a priest. Traditionally, I want you to reimagine a time that still exists within churches today where people do call a priest. I have the privilege of serving a predominantly immigrant population, uh, congregation in our church, and I tell you many of them call the priest before, before they call 911. And without going any further analyzing this, it just goes to, sh to show that they trust the priest, that they rely on the priest, that they have a secure relationship with this priest that they can call on and get help. Priestly medicine is about this secure relationship. I, I want to share with you a story that happened in, a, in my, one of my visits to the hospital. Um, I went in, visited the man I was visiting, and it was quite late at night, so I went out, and there was this big man with his hair down and his beard. He looked very scary. Look who's talking. And, <laughs> and I said, you know what? I better get out of this place quickly because he was roaming and with his patient gown on, and I heard, overheard the head nurse calling security to hold this man down because he wanted to leave the, 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 the hospital. And I said, if I, can't, if I don't see him, if I don't hear him, then he doesn't exist. I don't exist. Let me just head to the elevator. And it worked well until all of a sudden, from the back, he says, you. Father, priest. I continued walking. And I went to the elevator, went in, and turned around, lifted up my eyes just to see where he was. And he was picking up pace and coming towards me. And my finger just went to the close the door button. And I went, close, close, close. But Murphy's Law was in effect that day. And the door wouldn't close. Just two, three feet before this man was right by the elevator, the door closed. And I went, phew. Then I went, oh, oh, this man called for a priest. This man called for help, and I wasn't there. Next day, I was out with my spiritual mentor, who's a senior priest in our church, and we went visiting the hospital. And on the way to the person we're visiting, my spiritual mentor kept tapping on people's shoulders all around. Hi, how are you? Good morning. And I said, Father, do you know these people? He said, no. I said, what is this? He said, that is what priestly medicine is. Priestly medicine is about looking at someone and say, you matter to me, even though I don't know you. Priestly medicine is about holding an attachment secure, what people need the most. Thirdly, priestly medicine is physical, psychological, and spiritual healing. Say physical, yes. A priest always walks with something very important in his pocket. Oil. We pray for the sick. We use oil. We anoint people with oil. In the book of James in the New Testament, there is reference to the oil, where it says, if someone is among you sick, let them call for the presbyters, the priests of the church, and let them anoint them with oil. And it speaks about God healing them. But also, priestly medicine is psychological healing. Patience and compassion, something very important in the spiritual formation of priests. We're taught to listen. We're taught to be, we're taught to have empathy. And a lot of people nowadays, as they go in and out of physician's office, and that's needed, but they say, I want someone to hear me. I want someone to listen to me. I want someone to show more patience and compassion. And that's what we're trained, that's what we're being brought up in the church to do, to listen to people. I think as a stethoscope listens to the physical beating of a heart within, patience and compassion are the priest's tools to listening to the psychological cry that goes within a person. And finally, also the psychology of confession. I don't have to preach about this. You can Google it and read all the, the articles, scientific articles, scholarly work on psychology of confession, confession and how people come out, out of a safe confession feeling a lot better, feeling that they have offloaded their problems, and their sins. It's a spiritual, because as McMinn puts it best, sin is an original part of our character. Sin is our sickness. And a priest, what he does is he reminds the people that God forgave, that God let go, and that therefore we should let go as well, 
each other's faults. A priest reminds people that there is peace to be made with God, with themselves, definitely, and with others. And so that is what priestly medicine is about. This has been my talk on priestly medicine. Reimagine. Thank you.